the ten ox herding pictures. Picture one, searching for the ox. Till now, the ox has never been lost. Why then do you need to search for it? Turning away from your own awakening, you became estranged from it, then enclosed by dust. In the end, you lost it. The hills of home recede farther and farther away. You're lost as soon as the paths divide. Winning and losing consume you like flames. Right and wrong rise round you like blades. Beating about the endless wild grass, you seek and search. The rivers broaden, the mountains stretch on, and the trails go even deeper. Your strength exhausted and spirit wearied. No place allows you refuge. The only sound, evening cicadas shrill in the maples. Searching the deep hills, no sight of the ox, just the empty shrilling of the cicadas. The first step is to go out in search of the ox. We are at the stage of arousing Bodhi mind, the desire for enlightenment, where each person affirms the vow to seek the Buddha Dharma. All your practice is in vain if you do not first make that affirmation of the vow. There are people who lack the fire to bring light into their own future. They lapse into wishful thinking, hoping someone else will provide that light for them. Have nothing to do with this kind of thinking you must resolve to create that light for yourself. You must affirm the vow never to give up until you have become a Buddha and brought peace to this world. Buddhism, there is a saying, the first arousing of mind 
that moment is already true realization. When you first affirm the vow to attain enlightenment, at that moment there is already a splendid enlightenment. Thus, the first step is that each one of you must affirm the vow. You must affirm, sentient beings are numberless. I vow to save them. You must affirm, delusive passions are inexhaustible. I vow to put an end to them. You must affirm, Dharma teachings are unfathomable. I vow to master them. You must affirm, the Buddha's way is supreme. I vow to attain it. Till now, the ox has never been lost. Why then do you need to search for it? Going out to search for the ox. This is really about each one of you trying to grasp your original face before you were born about you becoming aware of your spiritual self. Now then, till now the ox has never gone astray. That is, do you recall ever having lost your Buddha nature? Has there ever been an occasion where you misplaced your original face? No, your Buddha nature, not just yours, but everyone's Buddha nature, till now, has never been lost. Is not something which can be lost. Your original face is not something which you can leave lying around somewhere. Not even once. When you eat, when you drink, when you lie down to sleep, or when you awake and get up, this is all Buddha nature. These acts are all original face at work, are they not? We are already living our daily lives within Buddha nature. Isn't it then a little odd to go in search of it? Why should we have to search for it? Remember, all sentient beings possess within themselves, from birth, the true source by which each develops into a Buddha. Since we all possess a Buddha within ourselves from the beginning, since we have never lost that Buddha nature, does it make sense to say that we now have to go in search of it? It is like looking for your glasses 
with your glasses on. Or like searching for your walking stick with your walking stick. Or like looking for the shoes that you are right now wearing. Going in search of the ox is the same sort of queer thing. Do you search for an ox when you are riding on its back? Turning away from your own awakening, you became estranged from it, then enclosed by dust. In the end, you lost it. Although we all possess this Buddha nature, although we all have an original face, Although we each have an immaculate spiritual self, yet we turn our backs on that original face because we are all attached to the belief that only in the world of sensations, in the world of the body and emotions, in the world of discrimination, does the self exist. When we deny our Buddha nature, we become estranged from it. Buddha nature is that place without discriminating consciousness. But because we fall into discriminating consciousness, we end up strangers to our own Buddha nature. The selfless self, like that of a newborn baby, is our original face. But as soon as we gain a little unnecessary knowledge, we end up strangers to our original face. An old verse goes, What a mistake to die at Kyoto White. My own white hair was better. As soon as you discriminate in thought, do something ridiculous like that, you lose that original face. Then, Enclosed by dust, in the end, you lost it. That is, when you fall into the vulgar world of the five desires, it is like having your feet mired in a mud field, the mud of constantly saying, this is pleasant, and that is painful. This is good, and that is bad. This is worthwhile, and that is not. When you do this, you have lost your original face. This discriminatory thinking mired in the vulgar world of the five desires, makes you more and more estranged from original face. The hills of home recede farther and farther away. You're lost as soon as the paths divide. Here, you are falling deeper and deeper 
into the world of discrimination. With discriminative thinking, you fall into the relative world. You jump into making comparisons. But discrimination only brings more discrimination, which only brings on more discrimination. Until finally, you don't know what is what. Winning and losing consume you like flames. Right and wrong rise round you like blades. I'm happy or I'm sad. I win or I lose. That was good or that was bad. These are the flames of discrimination, which blaze up around us like a conflagration plunging us into an all-consuming discrimination, which traps us no matter which way we turn. Here, at this point, it certainly looks like there is no way out. More and more, it looks like there's a nervous breakdown approaching, which can't be avoided. Claiming, this is unfair, that's unequal. Each person will fall headlong into the discrimination where winning and losing consume you like flames. Right and wrong rise around you like blades. From this, it doesn't look as if there's any way out. Clinging to this divisive way of thinking, getting hung up on dividing everything, is what causes the conflict in modern life. Here is where the modern person's troubles arise. But your true self, your real self, does not reside here. Giving the larger portion to the other and taking the smaller for yourself so that everyone is satisfied. This is true equality. When everyone defers to the other saying, please, you take the larger portion. Then everyone feels pleased and says, thank you, thank you. This is how to share things equally. The real self, the true self, is not found in this world of discrimination. It resides in a higher place that transcends discrimination. In that place that transcends discrimination, there is true human equality. It is just this human equality which is the Buddha we must all revere. Until we go right back to the original starting point, 
there will be no world anywhere where we can be saved. Despite having affirmed the vow, wherever you look, you find your mind is still filled with illusory thoughts and driven by delusive passion. You are probably wondering, can there really be Buddha nature here? And the more you sit, the more your mind fills with thoughts. This is beating around the endless wild grass you seek and search. No trace of the ox, not even a footprint can you find. You can't catch a glimpse of even the tip of its tail. You think to yourself, Where do I find this thing called Kensho? This seeing one's true nature. In your impatience, you may even start to think, Who needs Kensho anyway? I'll take my deluded self just as it is. The rivers broaden, the mountains stretch on, and the trails go even deeper. The streams of passion and desire grow broader and broader. The mountains of ego stretch on and on. There doesn't seem to be any way to get across the waters of passion and desire or to climb over those mountains of ego. It doesn't look like you will ever get to the other side to continue your search there. The further into those mountains you go, the narrower and more frightening the path becomes. There is no point in even thinking of asking someone for help since there is absolutely no one around. Lost in the dark valleys of the deep mountains, you don't know what to do or which way to go. Your strength exhausted and your spirit wearied. No place allows you refuge. No matter what you do, you can't get your hand on it. You've fallen into this black hole where you understand and then you don't understand. The only sound, evening cicadas, shrill in the maples. Up in a tree, there is a cicada constantly shrilling.
you think to yourself, I don't understand a thing. This is awful. This state of mind is truly searching for the ox. But if you throw in the towel here and give up, all your efforts will be wasted. After all, you are only at the very beginning. You have taken only the first step in searching for the ox. If you are already this tired, already reduced to this wretched state, how will you ever awaken to the one great matter? Going through this dark state of mind is something through which all of us must pass. Everyone experiences a time when they say, I can't do it, I failed. At this time especially, you must not think of giving up. Searching the deep hills, no sight of the ox, just the empty shrilling of the cicadas. You cannot see the ox anywhere, it is like searching around in complete darkness. You don't even know where to start looking. The teacher tries to instruct you, but it is all like the empty shrilling of the cicada. Nothing helps. You are searching desperately everywhere but can't find even the slightest trace of the ox. There is only a cicada up in a tree, meaninglessly shrilling away. You don't know where to turn. You are lost on some forgotten bypath. Here, you must not break the vow that you have affirmed. You must make an even greater effort. Push yourself even harder. There is still a long way to go before you get to clarification of the great matter. As the old verse says, to persevere day and night without break and light the candle of the Dharma is at once to attain it.
If you keep at your practice from dawn to dusk, then just as a spark leaps from the flint you are striking, so also, without fail, there will come a moment when your eye opens. That is what the great seal on the gateless barrier guarantees. The key, the heart of the matter is to persevere day and night without break. You will achieve nothing if you work on your meditation only when you happen to think of it. Your efforts will result in nothing more than froth carried away in the stream. But if you push on straight ahead, single-mindedly, without break, then there will be a time when suddenly your eye opens. Do not let down your guard even once.